Recording in progress. And uh, changes to the agenda or additions or whatever. We do have one addition um, talking about the Northhead Park wastewater study. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> In a short conversation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Stop getting messy. Okay. Um, you're just here to keep an eye on us? Do what? You're here to keep an eye on us? Yes. Okay. For the next year. That's right. Okay. <laughs> Works for me. Yeah, we've always been doing this. That's good. <laughs> okay. Well, as you see, for those of you who haven't met, and you may be here, or want to see Ali going on. Okay, okay, Ron's there. Um, um, yeah, we'll, uh, Brent Sheets, who is the new town administrator. Um, he's not, uh, he's a new town administrator. He's not replacing anybody. <laughs> it's hard, it's hard to, somebody that's been around a long time. So he's, um, Adjusting to Vermont life from Texas. Oh, gee. Yeah. <laughs> a little cooler? No, no. I mean, it's, 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 well, it's cold oh. there, so thank you. Welcome. And, uh, and to make it really easy, his wife's name is Kim. <laughs> so that's one of the things we're looking for to have people with the same name so there's yeah. less confusion or it's, yeah. you know, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, here. This is meet Dean Lock. Hi, Susan. Well, no, but Allie's there, right? Oh. Yes. Can you hear me? Allie, yeah. can you hear us, Frank? I can hear you. <laughs> All right. So Dean Lock is going to be a little bit late. Um, okay. He had he had mentioned he was going to let uh, Ron know yesterday that he wouldn't be arriving till about 630. He had a prior engagement with Johnson Rex. Okay. All right. Um, so he will be there, but I have an update for you. Okay. If you, if you want to hear it, um, I, I sent you... everything to Savannah by email and you, Susan and Ron. Um, so you, you all have the paperwork in your email. Uh, but I did get the quote today from um, the contractor. And I'm going to pull it up right now. <sighs> View. All right. So he came back with a total of $42,291.97. That is without doing any mitigation. Uh, if there is asbestos in the building that we have to you know, drill through. That's the only way it would become a problem is if we have to drill through it. Okay. Um, I have yet to receive a quote from uh, Fred's, even though I contacted them over two weeks ago. Um, as of right now, I don't know if Bourne's quotes will still be valid as they recently sold. Um, I just learned last night from a pretty good source that they fired everybody at Bourne's and they're making them go through a rehire process. So I don't know what, what the standing is at the moment. Um, and then I have the electrical quote from um, Local Electric. And that one is, hold on, I got to pull them up separately. I'm sorry. Okay, that's all right. Oh. All right, local electric came in. Oh, that's the wrong one. <laughs> Sorry, that was for a different client. One moment, I'm just going to mute you for a quick second so I can find it.
to what? Uh, I don't know. 42,297. 42, 000, 42, 000, 42, uh, yes, but you have to take off the bottom part where it says moving a panel from like a bathroom oh, okay. to the other side of the wall because that has nothing to do with us. He just attached it on ours um, without making a second quote for Betsy. So take that off, and that's what ours would be. Thirteen oh five. Yeah, that sounds right. Okay. Thirteen oh five. Okay. And then you guys already have the quotes from uh from Borns. We talked about that at the last meeting. But in total right now, between all those quotes, you're, it comes in about 55000 and change for work on this wing. Which to me is slightly over what I was guessing for a budget. Yeah. About 25 more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Um, I also did send Savannah and you, Susan, and I believe Ron as well, the updated price list for the uh, prefabricated kennels, if that was something you guys still were interested in, um, which isn't actually, you double the price that we're going to pay if we do it for the kennels at this point, and you would have a brand new one. It's just where you're going to put it. That's the problem. Um, the other thing was... You wouldn't have any place and you wouldn't have any water and you wouldn't have any... Right. The other thing is, is that uh, Betsy and Jason uh, over at the kennels had mentioned that if Act 250 approved, we could put a building up there um, that was separate from theirs if that's something y'all wanted to do too, but then you have to go through the Act 250 process, which they already started. They just haven't completed. But but that's going to be more costly again because right. you've got to develop the site and the power right. and everything. So Yep, I'm just throwing y'all the options that I've looked into. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. Right, I, and I appreciate that. So I mean it right off the top of my head, it sounds as though still working with them in that spot is going to be the least expensive of the expensive options. Right? Correct. Right. And, and they're still, what was their looking at a lease price a year? Uh, they, as last I knew, it was still the twenty five thousand a year, which split between you know five towns, five thousand yeah. east. Okay. Um, Morseville, um, they have a new ACO. His name's Bruce Emerson. He's also one of the part time officers. He reached out to me the other day and he would like to know more information um, so he can present it to the Morseville Select Board on uh, being a part of this interlocal kennel agreement. Okay. Um, and you've heard something from Stowe? Uh, yeah, Stowe is interested in becoming part of it too. They would also like more information. Um, we, me and Savannah, we talked a little bit. We decided until we got more information from the board that we kind of didn't want to do a meeting as of yet, especially right. since we didn't have all the quotes back at that time either. Um, but yeah, Stowe is interested in being part of that too because they're having a hard time becoming an a or finding an ACO. Uh, they asked me if it was something I was interested in, but honestly, I do not have the time, nor do I want to travel there for every, you know, pickup and call. So, not a bad idea if we can help them out part time. Which, right. if you guys take on Dean as well, right? They would be easier. We could split it. Yeah, and 
and Dean would bring in Johnson, right? Exactly. Yes. Okay. Have we heard anything from Cambridge? Uh, Cambridge is still without an ACO. They are still interested as far as I know. Eden is also taking interest. Uh, they just lost their ACO. Uh, they resigned last week. Their last day was Friday. <laughs> so they're dropping like flies. Okay. Well, right. It, I, again, it's, well. But all, all of these people you've talked to want to know mm -hmm. more about it. And nobody's confirmed that they wanted to do it yet. Oh, we have Correct. Yes. Yeah. Well, they I want a more formal. First thing uh, to work on is set a price and do whatever we got to do. Well, that's then, that's what she's got all these quotes for. And then go like to the people and say, "This is what it's going to be," because you know, exactly. Work out all the money. Are we going to be the ones to work out all the money, or are we going to have a guarantee from other towns to do it for at least a couple of years? Right. That that's the plan, Rolly. Um, most towns are hoping that we come up with, with an interlocal agreement, uh, you know, with everything laid out of what costs will be, um, what, what the expectations will be from, uh, you know, their town's ACOs, um, and what the expectations for the, for Betsy and Jason will be at the kennels all in writing and they want it presented to them in a meeting. Okay. And when they were, when uh, the evening that they were here and talking about it, as I recall, uh, they're currently, there are a lot of towns that are interested in this kind of arrangements. Most. There uh, are many, many, many towns communities that are, that are in the same boat. Uh, yes, there is. Hardwick, Hardwick actually has taken interest in this as well. So you'd have Hardwick, Woolcott, Stowe, Morseville, Cambridge, Johnson. Eden, Waterville, and Belvedere, I'm kind of including with Eden, but not unofficially haven't right. reached out to them yet because they're so small. They don't even have an ACO. Well, yeah. I shouldn't say that. Dean Mercer covers for Waterville. Um, and Elmore is actually interested as well. But they, I don't know the level of their interest because <laughs> uh, historically their record with the kennel was actually fairly small. They might have had two dogs in there a year. Yeah, exactly. I expect the smaller communities, once we have a place established and here's a set fee, that's how they'll deal with it. They probably, they're not going to want to, again, they have so few dogs right. each year that it's, it's not worth, they're better to pay by the dog. Right, which that could be something too that we could extend to them. If there's space, we could extend, you know, a rent by use type thing. Right, right. If we have space. Okay, Savannah, you got anything to? No, we just need numbers before we move any further. Yeah, sounds like we're getting pretty close to numbers, though. So, mm -hmm. do you guys want more quotes from more contractors or anything? Did you only get one? I got one uh, from Silverback Construction. He's local. He's right here in Hyde Park. Honestly, some of them, I did call a few others. Some of them are already booked out so far. They wouldn't even have time to do anything. But I can keep making phone calls if that's something that you guys want. I mean, we should have a couple. But again, if people aren't willing to quote, I mean, if you contact them and they don't want to give you a quote, a lot of times by this time of the year, the contractors are already booked for the spring and summer. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. I, I like go ahead and, and keep checking, but it, even when they say no, it sort of keep a list of who says no. So yep. just to end up with this, it's not as though, well, we just got one bid and we didn't check any place. It's that this is what our options were. Sounds good. Okay. And we'll uh we'll wait until uh till Dean arrives and drop back to that. Okay. Would it make more sense if Justin drafted something and put it on Front Porch Forum? Oh, thank you. So or, it's like more official and not just, you know, yeah, me reaching out? For, for a quote for the... For the kennel. Maybe, maybe, maybe what we do is, is you have something, you put, you put something on Front Porch Forum and on Facebook, 
but what it does is have them contact you instead of trying to get into a lot of details. Right. Any, anything that's there is not going to be enough information for somebody that's actually interested. So if we just have them contact Allie, if they're interested in a, in the project, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, I'll send you, email, send you a draft version of that and get it posted. All right, awesome. Super, good idea. Okay, information for the Newport Ambulance regarding NIMS. Is Scott going to have... Is he going to come? Uh, I see. I haven't heard from him. Just one of those nights, I guess. <laughs> oh, it's got now we're going to save something and let you. Yeah. He was on the draft agenda. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, so. if it ever became official. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's go into the board <laughs> compensation comparisons to other towns. I think we have a nice, we have a sheet, right? Yeah, and Jen also sent along um, her calculations. So that's the first page. Then the <laughs> second page are my calculations. And, and that's also the town of Hyde Park and Johnson personnel policies on the table. Brains <laughs> the chart. You want a copy? Yeah. Yeah. You want a copy? All right, copy. Okay. You're interested? Okay. Is this the only one copy? Okay. What are we all deciding here? Um, we're deciding how to compensate what to do with Justin since we're way under compensating yeah. for the other towns he's working with and in terms and in terms of benefits. But we all can't give them benefits. No, which end up paying part of the benefits. Got it. Yeah. I'll let, I'll let Jen Got it. explain it. Right. So there's a comparison there for what I make in Hyde Park for hourly wage versus what I make in other towns and then their benefits. Yeah. And then the page before that is what the town of Hyde Park pays their employees right. with their benefits. Okay. And Jen broke that down into what the prorated amount would be if I just work an average of eight hours a week. So it'd be a prorated benefit. So that's from me, or how we want to think of that. Which I'm sure there's a difference that Jen can correct me on. But okay. so there's, there's that option in one way, and or and or just addressing my hourly wage and 
foregoing the personnel policy as well. Not foregoing him, but. Well, let me come on this for a second. What, what's your, what's the confidence, there's the one I want, the compensation rate as a gesture, as you have, you have two jobs with us. Yep. So as the assessor, I'm at 30, going right. through 35 in March. Right. And as board clerk, I'm at 25, 20. Right. And how many hours a week do we average for the assessor? Eight. Okay. <laughs> and one thing I figured out from Jen is when she was talking about a week, she was talking about a paycheck, and I was talking about a week. So, so I have to make sure. So when I'm talking about a week here, I'm talking about the Friday. Yeah, right? seven. So in a paycheck, it would be 16. 16. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Having completely screwed everybody up with that one last week. <clears throat> so, so we've got eight to 10. So we're. We're 18. Let me see what that's 24 a week. That's 10 to 20. Let me see. So you're they with the two jobs here. It's probably easy that it that it's 18 a week. Uh, so for the assessor, that is all through the interlocal agreement, right. other than what we need to discuss as an in-house assessor for grant work or et cetera. Okay. So in that capacity, I would be essentially working for a town of Hyde Park in three positions, one through the interlocal, okay. one through the I gotcha, right, if we add that to it. Oh, one direct, one interlocal? Mm -hmm. Right, right. right. Yeah. But, <clears throat> but what we're, let me see, see if I'm right in this, folks. What we need to consider is the total number of hours. Talk about putting together a strange job, right? right. <laughs> We're we're talking about the total number of hours that you work for high pot, right? Because I think that's for, again because none. If you look at that, you get to a. Well, here are the number here are the number of hours we should be considering for. For uh, well, no, you're right because the health insurance is split up and that's under the interlocal. Okay. So as a town of Hyde Park employee. Eight hours. Right. Okay. Without the in house assessor. Right. Because we've already sorted out the, the assessor. Yeah. If I may add yeah. that another added, added complication. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. So. I worked for, through the interlocal agreement, I did 1.25 hours of grant work and build it through the interlocal agreement. And apparently that's not how the interlocal agreement set up and how it's supposed to be done. So they deducted 1.25 hours from my last paycheck. I talked with Susan and Johnson about that today. Okay, I yeah. talked with Ron about it last week. Um, so the 1.25 would also need to be made up for in Hyde Park. In Hyde Park, because uh, it was a Hyde Park for Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Well, that's not too complicated. That makes sense. <laughs> I mean, we owe you that. You work for us. But we don't have a rate for that, technically. Right. Yep. So we just and need a whole new thing. job position just called Justin. Yeah. And whatever he does. Yeah, we don't doubt that at all. It's called Justin Pennsylvania. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like okay. so, so Jen's thing right here, it looks like ideally you would want ETO to tie. And okay. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. It's if I think um, with Jen's here, if you're going to consider other part-time employees in the town, then I think this is a great option route to go with and alter personnel policy and follow this format. Um, I don't think necessarily be 
fair right for me to get this format but not other part-time employees mm -hmm. so so what makes the most sense to you <laughs> As a town employee worker person, I would say it makes more sense to adjust a personnel policy to mm -hmm. include part time employees. Yeah, I agree. And yeah. as a worker, I would say we also discuss my hourly wage aside right. from that. Maybe after they can. Does Johnson have a part time in here? They do. Probably. Yeah, they okay, they do. So they do. Yeah. Okay. And is it basically what Jen did? Or do you is that is just it, before I start? Jen, okay. jump in if you want. Relatively so. Um, yes. Their health insurance and dental and retirement probation does not start until 24 hours. That their part time ETO, I think, is 88 hours for the year starting off. And then it goes up from there based on how many hours you work. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Well, it looks like that. With this probation, the holiday hours and ETO would be less than Johnson, but then the health insurance would kick in automatically. So I think it works itself out. Yeah, because she did it based on a percent, you know, like 20 percent because you're working eight hours out of 40, which makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I tried to follow that. I think it's been a couple of times. It sounded great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. It makes sense for sure. So. Chess, how do you feel about working with Jen to come up with the changes to the personnel policy? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then, and so we'll do the personnel policy and the wage change. And if it's five, I mean, this is how most of this is done. I think yeah. technically it takes a while to make a change in policy, but if we know what we want to do, we can go ahead and change it. Right. And if we could, if it's possible to do that by the end of the month, that'd be great. That it would be done. Yeah, Does that sound okay? Yeah, what time on? They'll for for Chast and Jen and, and working with you by the next meeting, so in two weeks to have policy changed and do the wage change and figure out what we're doing and do that by the end of this month. That sounds great. Thank you. And I don't know how much I'd have to do with the policy change. So I think that's more to do with you and Jen's schedule and timing. Okay. All right. So if you're going to look at a policy change in the personnel. Yeah. Um Jen and I have talked about this, I can't remember even the last time though, but one of the things in the personnel policy, the way that it's written, it makes it sound like employees get their ETO times front loaded January 1st. And that's not how it works. It never has been in our town. They've always accrued it by pay period. So you get so much every pay period. So one of the rewrites, if you're gonna do this, yep. should include that just so that Sure. The policy is brought in line to what we're actually doing. Okay. Um, we, I asked for that in past policies, and it was just okay. It just didn't happen. That's what you started yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so my question with that too is, sounds great. Okay. Um, the holiday hours and etc. Does that mean you could potentially go over or be less than? Is it based on your actual hours worked, or is it still a set hours that you accrue per pay period? So the, the federal holidays that are part of the, the um, policy, so Christmas Day, New Year's Day, Thanksgiving, those holidays are separate from the ETO calculations. So you have your ETO calculation of like that that two weeks a year, whatever that is, whatever that is, plus the federal holidays. Okay. And if I remember right, 
somebody was hired recently part time, and when they hired him, he mentioned that his holidays are prorated. So, you know, you, a full time person, Chris, that might get eight hours, and this part time person maybe gets six because of the way okay. of the number of hours that he uh, works. So, okay. that's something. And the ETO, for example, I am supposed to average eight hours, but I actually average nine hours. The ETO would reflect the nine hours. I don't know the answer mm -hmm. to that question because thinking Krista, who does get a little bit of overtime every week because of the way the office flows and the cleaning that she does, I don't know if her ETO goes up a little bit when she has that overtime. Mm -hmm. I don't think that it does, but that's something you'd have to ask Jen. Okay. I know our partners never did. Yeah, I know a lot of companies do. I work for companies that have done that, but I don't. I don't think that ours does. But you confirm that with Jen. Thank you. Well, because the highway guys work a lot of overtime. Exactly. So they have thousand hours. I was yeah. just thinking that. I was thinking they would and um, could yeah. potentially. Yeah. Maybe not this way, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Jen I'll, call, Jen, I'll call you tomorrow. She's supposed to, she's going to say, okay. Yeah. And she just. Okay. Um, we'll talk tomorrow. Okay. Okay. One of the other things you might put on your list that, that Jen will have is there was a real oddity with Mark. <clears throat> and um, yes. Yeah. yeah, it was so, odd. Yeah, yeah, and Jen agreed that that was, and it was just in Ron's like, well, here's what it says, so here's what you have to do, and Jen, and we're going, it's crazy. It is crazy. So while you're looking at that, yeah. sort that one out, too. I will. Yeah. I sort of like nobody had ever run into it, so I went, wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense. That sometimes with policies, you know, they sound great, and nobody runs into one of the little quirky things in it for two or three the, years. The one runs into it. The yeah. one That's right. You know, oh, no, that's not what we meant to do. So, okay. We get everything all sorted out. But with the assessor wage, you want to talk about that the next meeting too, have a whole finalization of everything. Right. Yeah. Oh, a whole package deal yeah. for you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The Hyde Park monthly newsletter. <laughs> Here it is. Um, this one has this draft version going and kind of reached a dead end of where do we go now? How do we publish it? What's the next step? So what are the answers to those questions? Don't have those in the packet of the next meeting. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll just let Jess and Jen come up with everything. Yeah, whatever. Sure. It doesn't work. Oh, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> a certain go through withdrawal. So, what was the the, the person of the newsletter? Obviously, to inform people, but like, like, where did the idea come from, and, and like, what's the intent on getting information into it? Justin and and Kristen were talking about, you know, it would be a good thing to do and get a little something. Would be an opportunity to to do some little educational things to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to uh to folks all oh, thank you well and we a lot of um <clears throat> sorry to interrupt but a lot of i don't want to say complaints but suggestions are that communication our communication is not great so the more stuff we can get out there to people the better because not everyone's going to sit and listen to our board meetings right i mean that's oh god don't blame me <laughs> but you know but like simple things they are pretty boring <laughs> So it was more, you know, to let people know about different meetings, to let them know about things on the agendas. Like, so that was a big thing, posting the agendas more. So it was just another form of communication to the town. And so how is it proposed to be distributed? Well, that's, that's what we're trying to figure out. Yeah. I mean, because when I think of something like this, like I see this and I'm like, okay, there's the town Facebook page that it, it could be posted this item. Right. Open right. to the fire department, right. shared by the town. Yep. 
shared yeah. by the employee, posted to the front porch forum. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. And then, like, so were there other ideas? Like, were you looking at like an email distribution list for people to sign up for or? Yeah. That's what we were trying to figure yeah. out. Like how That's, far do we want to go with right? Because like, yeah, we could just make it this as one post and just send out announcements, or do we want to have just a kind of like a newspaper, Hyde Park newspaper type of thing, but just a little newsletter that goes out? How I don't know. Yeah. But. So I will say that when it comes to advertising anything, whether it's the dog, the election, the taxes, the whatever absentee ballot, I feel like I go overboard. And then I still get the call. Oh, yeah. and, and I mean overboard. Newspaper, radio, no, right. front porch forum, Facebook, in the office, on the bulletin boards. And I still get calls that, you know, oh, I didn't know about oh, that. Yeah. But then I'm really yeah. well, sorry. You, you always this, this, right. this, and this, and, you know, well, I don't read the paper. Well, I don't have social media. I, I, so there's I, always those people yeah, that we're yeah. not going to get. I, can't I mean, you read the paper, but that's where we put stuff. Yeah. Yeah. No, well, that's why I just sort of figure if it's another thing and it's another menu yeah. the war. And and at least it's a, a, you know, when people say you're not doing anything, you can say, well, here are the eight things that we're doing. Right. We're yeah, trying. If you want to suggest something else, we're, you know, we're happy yeah. to try it. But it's yeah. a Continue. Sorry. Yeah. Like with all the avenues that you're talking about. But in addition, maybe at town meeting, since that's coming up, and you'll hopefully get some of those people that might not, maybe have an option for, like the few people that might not have social media, sign up for, like, have an option for signing up for it via email, or maybe a few that might not want to mail it. Like, yeah, I think we got have, yeah, people right. that would, you know, and then that might cover those few that well, would. And, and you could also, people, if you have a few copies in the office, if you stop by the office, you can right, pick well, one exactly. up. Exactly, just let yeah, them right. up. You know, yeah. I, mean, I don't it, imagine a lot of people are going to check that, you know, and have them sign up, you know, hey, here's another way to get communication. Right. But a lot of people are going to choose email. You might have a few that choose mail. I don't think it's going to be. Yeah, and I think I just sort of stay away from that from just because of the potential complexity. But and again, you know, just posting it on the you know in the bulletin board at the post office, you know, <laughs> it's a one major sort of thing. Just it's so, just an attempt to let more people know. Can you even just put them out on at the post office? No, 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 they won't let us. But, but put them out at the library. Yeah. Maybe yeah. Like stop. So what I was going to say is um, there are a lot of people up at the mobile home park who have called that oh. don't have internet access. We could put them there. So one of the things I do is I call Paul Nesky every year the day our town reports come in. Yeah. And he comes up and I put a box in the back of his truck and he takes it up. That's a good idea. And he puts it in their little mailbox room. Yeah. Yeah. So that is a distribution point. Like yes. I can make lots of copies. Paul, I'm going to drop this off or you can come pick it up or I'm going to mail whatever. Amy can have them at the library. Same thing. There are people who don't do internet. Right. Or and they go to the library to get the internet. So right. then they're there. Yeah. Yeah. In the same with story. Yeah. Really, yeah. That's a really good idea. Because <laughs> those are people, you know, they want to read it. They want it in their hands. They want the paper. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Did you get all that, Justin? <laughs> yeah. Do you want to do all that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I think do definitely district. Yeah, yeah, month. Yeah, that's monthly true. Monthly or quarterly? Monthly, right? Do we have that many notifications yeah. for every month? I'm going to say quarterly, too, but I think monthly. Well, there's meetings monthly and there's activities well, most monthly. Are, yeah, there are activities. And I think it may be one of those things if you start, you know, and you get into, I mean, they're probably monthly is something that should come from the fire department reminding folks about either it's replacing batteries or doing this or if you need a burning permit, if you, you know, just told, you know, getting your, remember to get your stove pipes cleaned. I mean, just all those sorts of things. It's kind of getting into the habit of having the, you know, the, mm -hmm. certainly well, from the, from the road crew, I'm sure they, they got something they'd like us, everybody. True. Yeah, like if a road closure or where they're going to be working and then like guy on has activities, we could help them. Let's help, say what about a calendar at the bottom that says for the next oh, month, that's good. these three things are happening. I know in a non-election year, I can do quarterly because of taxes. Oh, right. But every year, 
January, February, and March is loaded with election stuff around mm -hmm. town meeting, the warnings and the absentee ballots and the postings of sure. stuff and registering to vote and town meeting location and polling location. I mean, there's just so much. Right. But I think I know on a quarterly basis I could do taxes and monthly. I think it would be every year if we went that way, it would be those first three months every year would be like full of information. Sure. Well, and it could be doing this actually. With, <laughs> it's, it's mostly going to fall to Justin and Krista, I would think, sort of doing this. And we can sort of aim for monthly, but if it ends up being every six weeks, the world won't come to an end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, you could, you could put two months on there. It feels like, oh, hey, everybody's busy and it's just not happening. It's like, okay, so let's, you know, Let's see what's going on for the next month and a half or two months. Yeah. Maybe like an update from the fire department and highway as standard. Try to find another committee like Nun Hyde Park or Zion Valley or something as well. And then just have calendar date reminders of here's what's going on the next month. And here's what went on the past. Yeah. Month. And, and I bet if we start doing this, you could get Amy at the library. Yeah. So yeah. she has a event. She, she does have a event. And the Hyde Park Circle in there. Circle has the four events a year. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. a circle. Yeah. Um, who's with Hyde Park Community Circle? That'd be a good point. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> hey. Yeah. Yeah. That should get us started here with that. Okay. Then the next one, if you want to do it. Uh, that's the last step. Theme. Yeah. Hi. All right. Come on up. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Hi, everybody. Why don't you introduce yourself? So sure. sure. My name is Dean Locke. Um, currently, I'm the uh, ACO for Town of Johnson and the lead health officer. Um, also, the uh, coordinator of the recreation programs for the Town of Johnson. Oh, okay. And uh, and uh, came to this meeting. Um, I heard of you guys having an opening for an ACO. Me and Allie have communicated quite a bit when it came to all the issues that we got going on when the kennels closed down and, right. and trying to all work together to figure that mm -hmm. figure that out. So, um, yeah. I, I think just, and I'm sure Allie showed you because we she was we were talking before and sort of getting um, up to speed on the. We got a reasonable number of, of cost estimates in right now. So I think she and Savannah and probably working with you and, and getting to be at about a point where you can do a meeting and invite the other towns and say, here's what it is. I think before right. we do that for us as Hyde Park, for you to come up with some suggestions as to how we do it. So it, yeah. what it costs the other towns to, you know, to, to buy in yeah. Um, yeah. what you get for it. It probably, Ali has said, I think it makes a lot of sense if somebody's going to join that we end up having similar ordinances and in, in and ours are exactly the ones. same. Yeah. Johnson and then right. Hyde Park is exactly the same. Right. So right. So just sort of make one of those things if you're going to get in, let's have it all be as 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 everybody else. Clean process. Process. That's, yeah. that, that's, yeah. that's 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 right. Exactly. And yeah. then and then something we have to figure out. I mean, this is um you folks have filled in a lot of gaps right now. I'm just I'm just talking about the animal mm -hmm. side of it. Oh yeah. Um, but um, you know, this is this is now turning into a serious job. <laughs> you know, so so we're gonna so so in in that expense and what the whole thing costs, I think part of we've we've got to figure out, and that's where you you guys are gonna have to help us, but come up with what's the cost. Of having people do this because as as communities are finding it is no longer possible to find people that are willing to with a generous spirit and a kind heart and a you know take on this kind of a job mm -hmm. 
Um, okay. So, so part of that ongoing expense is is that kind of expense. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Appropriate. You know, appropriate level of reimbursement for for the duties that we do and perform. Um, we do things a little bit different in Johnson, um, um, where we changed from a stipend that was just a amount and it covered the whole year. That we went through more of a point of point of service kind of reimbursement, where if going out and picking up a dog was is one certain uh cost uh that okay, i would okay. uh the uh, phone calls is one thing working with okay and going out but i don't interact with an animal is one kind of thing but we kind of found that um it's it's working for us but it was an experimental because we kind of wanted to see like, yeah, just, where I where our numbers you. are when it comes to that and um so even even us especially with now with was stepping into where we're going right. to be with this, we're we're taking a look at you know what what is going to be the feasible because our the budget line will definitely be going up. But in the retrospect, the way I've pre uh, presented it to my select board is that um, even though the you know if we buy in, um, we also as the town will recoup a hundred percent of what we charge that person for the kennel fee and for the pickup and for uh, all the all that the infractions and everything. Otherwise, you know, we were only getting a small percentage from the kennel once the person picked up because the person just paid the kennel for right. the kennel service. Right. So it, it's not gonna add up to enough, but it but it is definitely, you know, a little bit of an increase on the revenue side base. Um, well, and I, th I think to Allie's and I don't know if in Johnson if you have, but that if looking at our fees, that it makes sense to increase yeah. a, again a number of those fees as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, trying to you know make sure that it's not out of somebody's realm uh, right. to be able to you know we don't want to make it into a burden to be able to go pick up their animal, but at the same time, it there needs to be a proper compensation. And proper compensation, like you said, for the ACOs that are right. going out and right. and doing the job. Uh, you know, we we use our personal vehicles. We, you know, to transport those animals. We, you know, we. Um, I was able through my town. I when I got into the position, I after a couple months, I made sure to requisition the appropriate things of like a kennel that I can put into my vehicle and house the animal in there instead of just the oh, animal running that. around <laughs> my SUV. You know, and, and bite gloves and X amount of different things that, you know, appropriate catch poles and all that, just so that I have the equipment. And once we got the scanner, that actually saved us a lot because half the time I could just find out who the animal belonged oh, right, to before sure. I drove them yeah. all the way to the kennel and had to do that whole process. But, right. Yeah. Right. So all those things kind of just help to fall into place to hopefully get the animal back to where it belongs. Right. Yeah. Well, that's I'd say if 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 you and Allie well, keep working with Savannah and come up with it, that there's the, that separate piece and what it would look like, and so yeah. we've got something in, and again, and that includes you know reasonable compensation and mm -hmm. figuring that um, it's probably safe to assume that if this comes together, the other towns are going to be interested in hiring you guys to do that job uh -huh. as well. So it's how much capacity is there, or what you, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot of different levels to it. Yeah. And yeah, and coming up with with some solid, some solid numbers to present to everybody because that's what everybody also wants. Sure, say, sure. Hey, what's yeah, the bottom the line? Budget. Sure. And that, that's right. You know, but town it, meeting is creeping fast. And, you know, and getting something into a budget loan and stuff like that. Well, we're we're already we're already, we're, already we're, we're rolling. Yeah, yeah. Yep. We, we got just got to roll with it. Yeah, and there you know there's some money in, but but again, I think for individual towns as we roll forward, there's not, and and of course the more towns we get in, the mm -hmm. you know the, the price oh, will drop for towns. Oh, so, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the reality is we don't we don't have another option. Yeah, yeah. and. And if we did any other option that 
had us transporting the animals out of town, out of out of the area, oh, that would increase the hardship of that person being able to go sure, to, to go get, get their the animal, animal and then right, just cost everything. And that's right. just everything right. just wouldn't go bad. Right. But yeah. Okay, so you guys, okay, we just, I'm, I'm doing good tonight. Get you to do it in Savannah. Okay, we're rolling with me next. So come up with a project. Sounds great. Right? Rolling with love a project. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Woo! Oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> but do we, we asking to be our. Well, we're going to next. I'm doing the dogs first. Okay, so we're taking care of the dogs. And now we need a health officer. That's the next part. That's which is separate well, at the, separate at the, equal or what it is, right? Yeah, at the first step, you know, I mean, I get again applying applying to be one of your ACO, um, and then the health officer piece. I would like to have a little bit more conversations uh, with about because I don't know like how you guys. I know. Talking to Allie and everything, I'm very solid on, you know, we're all on, right. me and her are right. totally on the same track with the ACO right. and everything else. Uh, the health officer piece, um, I would like to uh, just temporarily hold off for commitment to that until we understand just from you guys okay. a little bit more information. And the, the, the best person, and that would see, I, while well, Ron is still around, but because yeah. of course Ron has done it and Brent's brand new, so. Yeah be an education for <laughs> for everybody yeah. about um what the what Keith has done in the past. And a lot um, of things have changed recently. Yeah, well that's that's right. A lot of things have changed. And that's another one of those positions where you've got to look at at um at coming up with reasonable compensation for the person to do it. And I I know at least <laughs> Rowley will remember too one of the health officer things that we got into with a landlord and a tenant was oh my god um, <laughs> as you know yourself you know those things yes. can get really complicated and besides being complicated and a little difficult they're you know they can be remarkably time consuming I, extremely so right now currently we do um, we do have we do it we did recently adopt in Johnson the same kind of similar thing where depending on what I do as a health officer has a certain reimbursement connected to yeah. that. Um, and that's been working okay. We got we had a little bit of change because now we have a dilapidated uh, building ordinance that okay. they added oh, okay. that I that I oversee. Um, but uh, but then also the state took away all um, uh, housing inspections. From health officers as of oh. January first, yeah. uh, any health officer is not going to be required unless the local health department representative requests our assistance. We can go in and assist, but okay. actually we won't be uh, we won't be directly doing right. okay. uh, doing or say, rental inspections. Yeah, okay. it's being taken over by the state, well, actually, which which sense. nicely takes yeah. takes a yeah. takes a little takes a little bit off. Usually they're giving us stuff, not taking it away. Yeah, yeah. it was amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 And that's but, yeah. but the caveat is still there that if you're if, you're if the town does not have the agreement with the, I think uh, if I remember right with the with the Vermont City of Leagues and Towns or something to that effect, the ACO, the health officer is still in charge of it. If you do, then the you know the person, the state representative, can still ask for our support. Right. Ask for our okay. Yeah, but we're not the only only. Okay, so Ren and Ron, I'm sure you're hearing if if uh, if if uh, Brent and Ron and and uh, Dean can set up a time to have a have a chat, so you can learn about the health officers and and come with that what Johnson is using and seeing if that's working for now. So we got a framework for for cost as well. Of course, that one is probably impossible. You have no way of predicting how much time that job would be a year, do you? Uh, the Maybe first year that I did it, I, I, on one call of an unfortunate hoarding incident inside a, a large multi-unit apartment building, I technically uh, went through my whole mm -hmm. <laughs> old officer yeah. stipend in about yeah. Four weeks. Yeah, exactly. Uh, actually, yeah, probably less than that. But it's again, it's right. You just don't know. Just right. it's one of those variables. It's just like the ACO. It's it's very variable. You could have 
you can have a busy month, you can have a light month, or you can have a yeah. light couple of months. So yeah. it's just one like of those things. Or... Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. And our variable pair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You guys have any questions for me? No, thank no, you. No, thank you. Thank you very much for, for doing it. Not. We'll get this all sorted out. And, okay. and um and as I say, I think in, in talking with Allie and and, uh, and Savannah, I think we're just about ready to pull together once once we have an idea of of, of what is reasonable compensation yeah. for you guys, yeah. um, then be ready to pull together a meeting that we can actually give information to other people. Okay. Great. Yep. Um, feel free to Ron knows my email and get a hold of me and everything else to pass on anything. Yep. Okay. Uh, hey, Susan. Yes, sir. Um, Dean's proposal, I think, is two, two or three different components. One is the immediate need for assistance to Alley at the regular ACO role, uh, where they get compensated twice per year at four hundred and fifty dollars. The second part is the ACO plus position, let's call it when the regional kennel and all that stuff starts. Right. And the third one is the THO, which yes, we right. can meet, meet so we can come up with some kind of uh, proposal for the board and meet with Brent to get, you know, kind of roles and responsibilities figured out for that THO position. But there's three different things you're talking about. Yeah, I think we got that. Yeah. <laughs> so Ali, I'm mentioning that because Ali's asking for an action item on right. part one. I was going to say, I think we need to appoint him, right? That's yeah. What I was thinking, yeah. As yeah. animal yeah. control officer. Yeah. Right. If you want to do it, I'll make the motion to approve you, appoint you as ACO for the two stipends the year position. So will we be appointing him through and then we'll reappoint him at town meeting or how does that work is he just so, ACO? So yeah so they're they're ongoing appointments the uh, part b of the appointment which i don't know if dean's talked about um a few meetings ago you guys appointed ali as an enforcement yeah. officer for a ticket book and yeah. i don't know if dean's interested in that or if he just defer to ali to write tickets I already have the training for that, and I'm ready to also be able to to do that as well. So uh, right, but you you'll need to be registered by permission of the Hyde Park Select Board. Yes, I would just have to yeah do it through you. I'm just letting you know I have the you got experience through idea, Johnson right? to yeah. I have my officer number and uh, and everything, but I know I would have to be something totally different through you guys. Yeah. Okay, so you got you got what we're doing. You're, he looks at Justin and says, <laughs> "You're appointing Dean for the ACO position for the town of Hyde Park, not the entry level or the health officer." The Correct. One that's the stipend. That's right. Stipend. Right. It's currently is the stipend. And are you going to yeah. give me the authorization to write tickets? And I'm just going to say, and oh, and, oh, and, okay. and and give him the authorization <laughs> to write tickets. <laughs> Yes. That's exactly what Savannah said. That's exactly what I meant. <laughs> and I seconded it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. And then we'll, as soon as you three get together and come up with the, the interest in so the other and come with back with that proposal and it. You're working on that this and right. Thank you very much. Oh, thank, thank you very much. <laughs> Dean, have you officially met Brent? No. Okay, here. Let's see. Right, we're here. We're very formal. This is, this is he's he's the, he's the new town administrator. Nice to meet you. This is the new Ron. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, this is Brent. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I saw that in the news tonight. The SUV that burst into flames at the gas station? That'd be pretty exciting. Unfortunately, nobody got hurt. <laughs> like, what? Where, where are you going? <laughs> I drove my phone to get to the oh, calendar. So you kind of went, oh, yeah, it was the first time. Like, <laughs> she talked about that. Oh. At least we don't have a gas station, so we don't have cars bursting into flames there. Oh, Ron? Ron? 
whatever yeah. letter you sent to the judiciary to get Ali the ticket books, can you send that to Brent and I so that we have it to get a ticket book for Dean? Uh, I think uh, Brent should have that, but if he oh, doesn't, okay. if he doesn't have it in the folders, I can. Okay. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I guess you have to go all the way back to the beginning, even if you're certified in another town. I guess so. He's yeah, have training. He'll be ready. He of course, he'll have an officer number here and an officer number there. Gotcha. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he'll need to. And it's the same one. What? Why would you want to do that? It would, it would be, be too, simple. It would be too, That's right. It would be too easy. We wouldn't want to do that. Okay. Um, March. I just bring up the select board meeting dates. Um, town meeting is the fifth. I'd like to, if we could just have a doesn't have to be a particularly long one on the on Wednesday, the day after, an uh, an organizational meeting. Um, and and then again, one of the things I wanted. I'll just talk about them, find, you know, the best times to meet what works for people. I'd like to see if we can get us um, down to one meeting a month uh, for three hours. Right. Yeah. yeah well, exactly. Because I'm, I'm looking, I'm trying to find ways that makes it realistic for younger people to, you know, who have full-time jobs and families and all sorts of things that you need to do to be able to do this. Because I think um, I think it's really important and very helpful to have younger people on the select board. And if part of that is you figure out how you get down to, you know, the one meeting a month. Um, and if we do, and, you know, and Brent sends us, you get the packets before you do just a little homework before, mm -hmm. but it's also then if like with the, if you get a select board member, here's a project and you just take care of it. So we don't have to spend a lot of time at each meeting getting everybody up to speed that somebody's, you know, you come in with the thing for Justin and say, okay, here's what we did. And here's what we do. That looks good. Poof. We got it. We're done. You know, instead of having to spend half an hour getting all of us on the same space, you know, stuff with this, you know, with the interlocal, with the kennels, you could spend, you know, we can spend hours and hours at this kind of a meeting talking about that sort of thing. Or you guys do a little homework. We did doing with the assessor and the interlocal thing. It's, well, if you're doing centuries of time, well, but. currently we do two meetings at least a month, right? And then you do this homework also on top of it. It's kind of, yeah, it is a lot. Yeah, I have one yatha on one once a month. When I first joined the select board, we had a hard time making decisions, so stuff kept getting tabled and tabled. Yeah. So when you do two times a month, then stuff actually might get done. But if we if we have one meeting a month and we are tabling and tabling, then you've got months and months and months of stuff hanging out there. So as long as that doesn't happen, then once a month will be okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I just want to make sure that I think that could be a long time happen. in between. Well, that's right, in between. You can to, do for decisions to be made. Y'all could do a call meeting if it came to the right. Call. If we had to make, because yeah. I don't. I mean, not that happens a lot, but it, stuff does come up right in between. So, I mean, once a month does sound good, but I just want to make yeah. sure. And we that, can, and again, talk about it, we can try it and see what night works best. And and if you figure that that once a month is you are going to you're going to get here at six and you'll probably be here for three hours, you know. So it'll be a you know, and and again, I think for part of that, it comes to if if we all do our homework before we get here, you know that, and again, that helps it, you know, move along. Yeah. And and again, if people looking at things, if you have questions before you get the questions, and whether it's about the roads to Mark or to Brent or to Justin or whoever, so that they can have the answers for us when we get here, or get you the answer even before a meeting, right? You know, just to just to give it a try and see mm -hmm. if we can see if we can make it work. And what's you know the 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 theory of going to two was was one of them we do business and the other we do you know to be able to talk about planning and projects and and that sort of stuff. And it, and it and maybe it's just because you know you have the second meeting you say well we'll put it off for two weeks. We're saying putting it off for a month is a lot better. It, no, I think we probably better make a decision. Yeah, exactly. That, you know? <laughs> and if we need to stay here until nine thirty, okay. Or as Brent says, we can always say, okay, let's do. And and again, I got to got to figure out in 
in terms of posting and letting right. the public know and all exactly. that how we how to do a call, but that you know there would be a couple of things and you and you do it as a if periodically we need to do a special meeting that is you know for an hour or whatever. So one question I have, and I'm just thinking back to when everything was one one meeting a month. Um, it was really hard to get some bills paid on time. Oh, another good thought. Um, and if you're running one AP batch a month, you're running a pretty big AP batch, and then you're holding everything well, for the next month. There is, I don't. There isn't any reason to not do it twice a month. I mean, that's the sort of thing that you can go and we can you can check it online. You know, it can be posted and we can check it. But you're not inside. you're not in a you're not in a meeting to say have a motion to pay the bill. Like there's not a record of a select board vote on that week, for example, to say pay the bills. Next three. And if you, if you do it by email, that's like a no no. So like how do you I have no idea, but I'm sure there must be a way. I mean, so I don't write I'm the warrants sure. we approved tonight. I think I misunderstood how we do this all this time. So those warrants that I signed tonight, Jen hasn't sent those out yet. No, those checks are sitting. Correct. So okay. she sends like, them once we sign them. Right. Got it. Okay, that's different than the school board stuff. Okay. So now what does the school board do? They're most of the time your vendor fine. sends you a bill that's due upon 30 days. I mean, so I can't see why you couldn't try to arrange with your vendors of uh, this is how we need to move forward and if they can change. Most of the time, nothing's past due, past 60. So she runs bills twice a month. Currently, because there's two meetings. Exactly. Because you're voting to pay them. Yep. I also mentioned, I'm not, I like the idea of having one business meeting, the one that's more of a leisure, having conversation policies hopes and dreams type of thing um hopes and dreams and we could also i'm willing to be in office like let's say the second meeting of the month i can come out five or six that way we can have an actual meeting with an in-person person and y'all can attend virtually and sign virtually or sign me coming to the office next and see you next month i got an idea yeah make the decision after march don't eat <laughs> well, we got to set meetings for March. Well, yes. we want no part of it. Yes. Hey, Susan, aren't you coming in during? Aren't, you're authorized every organizational meeting to come in between meetings and sign warrants. Are you not so, follow, You're not going to follow that anymore. Yeah. So, see, I don't. I don't know if, if you. I, again, if. I mean, I'm I'm sure there's I come in and sign now. I mean that's got I mean, I mean we did it before <laughs> when we were doing yeah. The, that's why my question is here for right. No, no. So, I mean I'm sure there's when, there's got to be when it was monthly bills were being issued monthly. The only thing that was different is there was a month end. The only thing that got paid at month end were the payroll checks. So the MVP, the I I oh um, yeah right, right right. And then any bill that we got a discount on. And we saved money, which we're currently not taking advantage of the discount. Right. Yeah. I, Jen, you're hearing this, and there must be, let's see, we don't want to go to just paying the bills once a month, and there must be some <laughs> way to do that without requiring the whole select board to meet twice to be able to do it. Susan, are you there? Yes. You're authorized every organizational meeting to sign warrants in between meetings on behalf of the board. That is not changing as far as I know. So I don't well, know why. Was, I was why, thinking, and I think that was that's sufficient, isn't it? We need to double check. That's, the lead, but that's, I think that's sufficient. That's the statutory process. The board yeah. has to vote an authorized signer for warrants in between meetings. Jen batches those up and presents big piles to you sometimes. Yep. To review at your next meeting, and you guys have been initialing them for years. So, I, is there some change that's happened in the last couple of weeks? No, no. I think it's just you know when we have a meeting, then you ha always have a motion to approve the warrants, and that's if if we aren't all here, 
that's a piece that's missing. And we're just trying, and I think we just need to know. No, if you are authorized to sign warrants on behalf of the board, there's that is the vote that you're talking about. You don't you don't double vote warrants. You you authorize you to vote, you, you to sign in between meetings, and the whole board will sign at meetings. Do you see the difference there? It's like what you're talking about is going to a monthly meeting and batching all of the invoices for that one meeting. You can do that that way, or yeah. the board right. can be authorized, the chair of the select board, to sign the interim warrants on your own, and Jen and everybody else can get paid. And then Jen simply presents a copy to the board at the next formal meeting so that everybody can review what you did. Well, and they're online. And and Jen posts them up. Yeah, and they're online. That's right. So I don't. Yeah, board members can review them online if they have any issues ahead yeah. of a regular schedule. So it's something to work out with Jen for sure. Uh, but there is an, a way to authorize Susan to go in and, and sign those interim warrants without the board having to meet. Yeah, because as you say, was when you come in, I've already signed, I've already been in and looked at them and gone through them and everything. Yeah, you do it all the time for payroll. Right. Right. So I will make sure that what we're doing so that so that Jen can just keep doing things the way she's doing them. Right. So we don't want to mess up that process. No, no, you don't want to get to the just doing it monthly. And that just makes yeah, that spreads it out evenly over the month and everything else. And again, there's the payroll and everything else. Okay. So so we can. Let's see, before I got sidetracked with the car bursting in flames. <laughs> and 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 if well, except we need for in no season. No, I want to know yeah. March. Yeah, I know. Six, I'm not going to be around. Do you see March 7th or Thursday? No. <laughs> no, I need to do well. I I I leave March 8th. I will be then working remotely for four weeks. <laughs> so I'd like to just do, and again, the organizational really is just it's a little quickie to get everybody together and say, here's, we can, you know, we can record that and not be anything. You don't need to be here, you know, for that. Um, but do we want to, want to go ahead and, uh, and just to be safe, say, okay, the, do the regular, Second Tuesday, so do a do a, a quickie on the sixth, and then one on the twelfth. And at that time, we get into a uh, and Matt will be here, and mm -hmm. we'll be here officially and figure out you know what day of the month we can see you know works best best if folks want to do that. And that'll give us to double check and make sure that we're perfectly legal and just. Having Jen continue to do what she's doing and and whoever we authorize, you know, because I think we authorized you as well for like when I'm away, so you can come in and sign. <clears throat> and the organizational meeting will be at six. Yeah. Okay. That work okay for folks and shouldn't shouldn't be shouldn't be long. Well, it's just to be safe and take it from the. Oops. Not a PDM. <laughs> no. Ooh. Now, here's the April eclipse. Anybody down there want some candy? It's been being good. It's been candy. It's really what the world knows. Oh, that's right. Okay, well, yeah, put it right out. I mean, I do, but no. <laughs> um, Kim, I know you're talking about so, so April 8th in the eclipse. <laughs> Amy and I have been chatting about trying to put something together. 
Um, we both order some of the Eclipse classes. Um, we're hoping, that, I'm hoping that our batch is here in time and I can hand them out at that meeting, but also with the polls. Um, and we just had some random thoughts we've kind of thrown out there and rather than take up time at a meeting, if you're interested in being on the committee, with Amy and I, Susan mentioned yes, that she was interested. Um, we don't have anything really set up yet, um, but we've had some thoughts. Um, I did reach out to Susanna Bowden to see if she was doing anything at her b, &B that we could kind of incorporate into our function. And she's just, she's doing something private for family. She did say that if we were doing something that people could stand on the lawn at her property and, and view, but whatever we do, she won't allow her property to be an official site right. um, as part of our function. Her site would be unofficial and totally separate from ours. Uh, I did reach out to some bakery um, and they are willing to do puffing, whatever. We just haven't talked about it yet. We don't even know what we're doing as a town. Um, but he's willing, I mean, I mentioned something like, would you put together like a Eclipse lunch menu item or, you know, something? And he says, well, do you want us outside or inside? I was like, I didn't even know outside was a possibility. Um, so there's so things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, Who knows what April like this. Right. Thing. And so they're willing to do something. Um, the elementary school is releasing early because of the Eclipse. Oh, cool. So I haven't reached out to the school to find out if maybe, because I asked if, uh, who does the barbecue at home day. Susan mentioned that it was a fire department. So I don't know if the fire department wants to do something. And even if it's not like a big no, chicken barbecue, because that's a lot. Maybe it's just burgers and dogs. I don't know. Um, do it up to the baseball, the softball people. So we thought about that, but... Like, what if there's snow? What if, well, snow, but also I was thinking, what if it's still too soggy for people to park on the lawn and there really isn't a lot of parking if you can't park on the grass? Well, you can park, there's a big parking lot. Right. Big, but enough for, oh, oh God, 100, right? 100 cars, easy? Yeah. Easy. A lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one of the other options that I, and I don't even know if it's a good site for viewing, but one of the other options was, Closing off of the portion of Main Street, just this side of Depot Street, so that Depot remains open. Right. Just this side of Commonwealth, so that Commonwealth remains open. Yeah. Just closing that little bit right there um, for the time. So it would be like 1.30 to 4.30 or 5 um, for the duration of the beginning and the very end of the Eclipse. So there was that thought. Um, and again, I don't even know if that's a good place to to view, right? So I don't know. Where's the sun at one thirty? Right in April. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in April, right? If we even is it behind the town of the? Yeah, I don't know the courthouse. I mean, that's oh, right. a big thing. You don't so, know. Right. I I haven't reached out to the high school yet. I wondered if that elementary was closing early. Is uh -huh. high school going to close early? It's not a lot of parking. There's the ball field right. that people could stand on. And if they don't want us on the ball field, because it's that time of year, mm -hmm. right? we could be on the other side of the trees where they hold the um, graduation. graduation. Yeah. I mean, that's a pretty big spot. And there's a lot of parking. Yeah. So we have things that we're thinking about. We really did want to incorporate the school somehow into mm -hmm. something, like maybe a presentation or some little thing, but they're close. So um, that's kind of where we're at right now. Amy and I are talking about meeting one day next week, having to pick a day or time. Just this week is tax. We can't yeah, right. so, um, That's kind of our, our plan. We want to do something. So that's where we're at. So if you're interested in being on the committee with us, great. Just let me know. That's all. No. Just, be just here. I know I'm not going to be here either. Oh my goodness. What a work trip. <laughs> We're going to be in Mo Montana. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so I'm really not going to see it. Yeah, that's cool, though. I mean, it's a nice book. I mean, they're crazy, but everything is booked. Yeah. So, um, the, um, yeah. Vermont yeah. is really. From Jersey asking to come and camp in our field. No, I'm kidding. And I'm oh, going, no. 
we could still have snow. Exactly. <laughs> still yeah, think you you oh, right. The yeah. first part of the first part. Yeah, right. That's why, you know, the emergency They're management tent. Is, like, is, I don't, in the winter. <laughs> I don't, I don't think we really are at all prepared for what's about to descend no, on I mean, us. There's a and lot talking of with, coming this way. with folks that the last one was, uh, it, it went right across the south. And I've talked to two people that were there. One of them was familiar with the area and, and said, um, uh, uh, a time and because there there's everybody getting there and there's all that chaos but then when it's done it's done yeah so you have and i just said think of the fish concerts anybody who can ever fish and go five times that that's what oh. it's going to be like yeah and and and, and then you compound our weather right and you're going to have and where lots of day trippers could come up from the whole of the greater boston new york here to say oh yeah let's just run up and see the eclipse and and the you think of the number of people they're going to drive into fields and get bogged down oh, no, no. Um, off the roads. I mean, it is it is going to be chaos. And while I'm sort of like, yeah, trying to do something is a good idea, the smartest thing might be to stay home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have good visibility. Yeah, 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 yeah that, right. you, know, right. you know, I mean, the state parks are doing what, you know, you don't have to, because Green River isn't open, so they're not. You know, but they know people are going to come up and it doesn't matter that the parks aren't open, you know, that people are coming to camp. And again, you look at our weather, the beginning of April, who knows, you know, what it's, what it's going to be. So, and, and again, these folks that saw it down south, a trip that usually took them two hours, took 13 hours. Okay. And another thing, oh, does he know when he was driving up 20 miles and all these neat back roads that he knew? The, the the distant back roads that nobody knew about were all pumped. So it's just, it's it's going to, it's the potential for a real mess is here. Yeah. You know, so so whether you, you know, we may, might be selling parking spaces at the school. But not, <laughs> that's the way you make the most money is yeah. selling spaces. So I, I don't, I just... Um, and and again, the League of Cities and Towns and the and the uh, the emergency management folks are doing you know calls and and uh, yeah, that was in last right week was one of those yeah. So yeah. so it's just um, I I don't boy I don't know. So I think it's great to try to put something together. We are you know at the church you talked about you know it might be fun and if everybody did so if you did it together, um, like to do an old fashioned you know, church potluck dinner the night before or to do a big breakfast that was from like eight to 10, you know, kind of thing. Um, I said, and then you'd have no idea how many people are going to show up. You think, oh, you know, there may be 50 or 60 people and you end up with 300 people and what the heck you do? <laughs> or you plan for 250 show up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the end of the word. Oh, phew, okay. That's <laughs> but I, I don't, I don't know. It's a, uh, I think it's kind of exciting. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember being in one when I was a little kid at school. And so I'm thinking of that when I think of this, you know? So. Okay. I'm liking this. Okay. How about, how about the minutes? Uh, I can only make a motion on one of them. You can, well, you can approve them both. No, I don't. The 23rd, I was like, I don't want to. I don't know saying because I was. Oh, you were. I was happy. remote, but oh, yeah. I didn't come in till That's late. And oh, okay. My father and I was there and you were, it was just a hot mess. Okay. Well, then I will make a motion to yeah. approve the minutes of the 16th. Yeah, the 16th, right. And I will second that. Okay. Uh, let's see, it'll be the three of us. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Because uh, Rory wasn't here, but then when we get to the... See, this is the one where uh, we can't do the 23rd because, well, Rory and I are going Yeah. Yeah, we can, we can wait and do it. We'll pick up Matt next time, right? So here we're online, Chats. I was, but I was. She oh, yeah, there was a lot going on at the house, so. Mm -hmm. 
That's not here. Right. Oh, and I and I'll make a motion to approve the warrants. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Okay. If you read on January 16th, the listers annual payments. Oh yeah. And then you read again a number one on the 23rd, they're not saying the same thing. On the, what did you say, the 16th? The 16th, it says the select board. Well, it says the listers have suggested a uh, yearly stipend for the listers, 1600 per right. year based on hours. The select board agreed to add 750 per lister. So it makes it look like it's sixteen hundred plus seven fifty. Oh, yeah, and that's not what it was. <laughs> well, that's what it says. Let's give you some. Oh, yes, right. Right. So you've already approved the second them. That's just the way that got the wrong way. I, didn't, I mean, I know what you're saying, but I didn't read it that way. That's not how it took it. Well, I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. right. But right. what it says. Interpretation. Interpretation, yeah, because I didn't say yeah. It's how I interpret. Yeah, I don't interpret. Yeah. Right, because it's a $1,600. Right, so, yeah. so do you see the, what we're talking about that needs to be? Yes. Well, not really because we did add 750, but we added 750 to 750. Zero to seven. To make yeah, seven. No, we just made it 750. You did, did, year. 750. We did the you same did, thing as we're paying. You didn't want to give us the 16. Oh, right. Well, okay. Agreed right. to right. 6750. Right. But I'm coming mm -hmm. to town meeting with a motion to add $2,550 to the budget. To increase our pay through the sixteen hundred per listener, just to give that heads up. Yeah. Okay. No. Appreciate that. Yeah. So either the voters approve it or they don't. Yes. Yeah. It's coming to town meeting. Right. Okay. Would you like to add us to that too? No. <laughs> you can do your own thing. <laughs> that's your. That's your right. journey, yeah. not on. So you just want me to reword it to be more clear? Yes. Yeah. That what we proved was not the 16 but the 750. <clears throat> because in the next one, that's what we did. Okay. Let's see, so then the I'm um, sorry, yep. let's go back. So Chastity and Savannah want to review their motion to approve the minutes as amended. As amended, right. Yes, please. Oh, so you're going to remove the approved and the seconded? Yep. Is that legal? Mm -hmm. It wasn't um, approved and seconded. It was just agreed to. It was yep. a, a form of motion with that one. Mm -hmm. They don't agree. It was approved. It was seconded. And there was three people that said yes. Where? On the 16th. No, she's you're talking, talking to you're talking things. two different things. Okay. okay. I can tell because I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. I'm like, wait, right. here we go. Interpretation. Okay. Right. Interpretation. Let's get all on the same page, things. people. <laughs> so the 16th has been approved and now you're on the 23rd. Correct. Okay. But we can't do anything with the 23rd because there's not enough people. Okay. Because yeah, Savannah question. and I can't. All right. We have to abstain. So nothing happens with that. That's not right. Okay. Right. So I, am I to assume we're getting seven fifty plus no, seven fifty? No, you're you're to assume you're getting seven fifty okay. until March. Good try. Yeah, not done yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Um, let's see. Okay. Okay. I guess we're good. The 27th is just um, uh, Paul Mesk is going to be here with the sort of run through, sort of getting ready for town meeting and what folks want to say. And 
Who wants to talk about what part of the budget? Oh, okay. Have, have an update on the what's happening with the kennel situation. <laughs> Good job, well, Rhea. Yeah. Don't worry. We'll help you out. Don't worry. Spare time, don't worry. Cool. Everybody helps each other out in that one. And other than that, I think we do anything else. Well, we added wow. the that's right. North side the North Side Park for that. I do think. Oh, I do have to speak. We should have. But they don't have the right details locked. Okay. okay. Say they are doing. That's going to be a big factor. You know, this is all going to put. It's going to save you a lot of questions and tell me. Well, but you can also say here's what the proposal is, and we're not yes or no. We, we don't know. We won't have the information. Time we have this time. Well, the other towns aren't going to agree until they know the price. <laughs> and we're not going to commit to the price until we know they're going to commit. So it's just big well, it all depends on the repairs, and we don't have all the quotes. Right. It's just a town meeting to say, so here, here's the situation. Here's what we know. Here are a couple of potentials. Here's what we're working towards. Just so, just so folks know what's, you know, what the options are. Okay, the North Hyde Park Wastewater Study. Well, right. they got, <laughs> I do know a little you bit. You do that, this, right. You got this. Just one. a little bit, get myself in trouble. Uh, the committee met and they had a pretty good uh, conversation about the, the study. Uh, unfortunately, out of 139 people that, that were sent out some surveys, only 14 replied. So if you go off the percentages there, that was, that was around 10%, if not less. Out of that 10%, nine of them, nine individuals that replied to the study actually had the septic things. And then out of that nine, there was total that were possibly interested in moving forward with the study were only four. Now, from my professional background and history, I mean, I understand if there was like maybe a 30-ish or 40% uh, return on that, then I could see that uh, planning commission to move forward with the visibility study, start to invest more money, get up to the 30% uh, percentile, and then see what we could do. But then that's that's still a lot of money for that uh, amount. So they wanted to squash moving forward. Now the LCPC, has towns in this area that are potentially ready for the feasibility study and they would like to keep those funds here in our county to assist our, our fellow communities with moving forward with their wastewater system. So um, that's what was. So if we go ahead and if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, if we go ahead and say we squash it, that's it for right now until the future, we, then, then the else that frees up the money for our local communities with Arnold County to do to move forward with bettering and, and updating their facilities after they do their feasibility study. Yep. Don't we? We probably need a motion. Yes. To um, to stop <laughs> to terminate the feasibility study for the or moving forward, forward with the or moving forward with yes. It. Right. So moved. Uh, Susan, yeah, uh, you actually have a contract on that project with you have multiple contracts with that that have to yeah. be undone. Okay. There's there's a state planning advance funds that you're talking about, which is sixty thousand dollars, which the state gave to the town. Select board accepted it for this work. Uh, that's a no cost to the town funds, uh, planning advance funds they call them. Uh, after that was awarded, which has conditions on it, I'm pretty sure that can be canceled. Uh, and then there's the Dubois King contract, which is your engineering contract. There may or may not be penalties in there for canceling. I'm not sure. Uh, you have to look at their contract. You have to look at the grant agreement contract to figure out how to get out of the planning advance. And then there's a third contract with LCPC for their uh, management services for that project. Yeah. So I just want, want to be clear, there's 
multiple entities. Be undone. Well, then I can look at that. Then we can, if you want to readdress that on the twenty seventh, I'll have more answers. For well, you. no, I think we we definitely want to we want to stop it. But then you're going to need to come back and see, and and I'm sure Seth can be helpful. Yeah. I don't, yes. Right. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I think the only check to you know you can have your motion to cancel the project, including all contracts except if Brent finds out there's some negative financial impact that needs to be brought back to the board, something like that. Right. Then we should just table it then until the 27th because I don't want y'all making any judgment errors and it costs it down. Right. Well, again, but he's saying we can we can do the motion and, it, and you go ahead as long as there isn't anything. Yes. If there is something, then that brings it back. But if there isn't anything, you can go ahead and cancel everything. Yes. So it lets you go ahead. We got that one. So we need a motion to to to, uh, to stop and to withdraw from the. So I contract. think I want to word it this way. I don't like that. Right. Uh, I want to make a motion to have Brent move forward with researching canceling the study in North Hyde Park, and we will see what the ramifications are canceling the contracts. Right. Doing contracts and agreements, yes. Let's do it that way. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yep, that was a second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all in favor signify uh, by saying aye. Uh, no. Aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. And to clarify, so make sure we have all the rules and procedures gone correctly, um yeah to amend a motion you have to say i move that this motion be amended by and that's how you would amend the motion and since you did make the motion already and it's finalized so then we should amend that motion that was made in this meeting and that's what you're you're, you're back to the think. Yeah, you're you're back to the previous one. Yeah. No, oh, I was yeah. like, yeah. I didn't change my motion. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's one of those where I knew what it was saying. I was like, wait, I don't understand what you're saying. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, you're looking at the rules. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yes, okay. So I need Should a motion to amend the motion. Right. A motion to amend my. My motion on approving the minutes? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I make, I make a motion to amend the motion to approve the minutes from Tuesday, January 16th right. with the change or the clarification yeah. that the select board agreed to give the lister $750 stipend. A seven hundred and fifty dollars stipend. Does that make sense to yeah. everybody? <laughs> yep. Yep. We have a second. Okay. I'll second. Okay. Uh, okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, thank you. I think we're good. Okay. Anything rolling? Bring back something from Florida. We're ready. <laughs> Anybody talking about that or no? The the under old dash new business yeah yeah there's an interlocal agreement share technology so i want to talk about that that has to do with the a camera and a laptop through the interlocal agreement um i haven't talked with johnson about this you folks are easy to go <laughs> off with um so the interlocal agreement doesn't have a laptop. I've been using okay. this laptop with your permission for Johnson right, right. and then Berkshire gets to use it too. So if you have your permission for that, I'd like your permission for that. Um, but since this is already purchased and has been upgraded with the RAM, et cetera, wondering if the town of Hyde Park would be interested in asking if the other towns would be interested in 
buying shares into the laptop so it's owned through the interlocal versus through the town of Hyde Park. Oh, gotcha. Yep. And second to that is there's a laser tape that can take photos and et cetera, field work for assessor. And we can get one for the town of Hyde Park specifically, or we can get one in the interlocal agreement or ask the town if they want to get one in the interlocal agreement and share it. So I don't know if you, if the select board or listers as well would rather have the town of Hyde Park own the equipment or have it be shared. What's the cost of the equipment? Just gonna ask. <laughs> Around $200. Oh, I thought you were going to tell me a lot more than that. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Is that Justin? Mm -hmm. Did you see my email about trying to order that one? Yeah, that it wasn't Did available. You... In China. It came from China or something. So, And nobody was contacting me back other than to say, we're not charging you taxes or whatever. So and that's when I was like, okay, Justin needs to know this. Yeah, so then I got to think maybe going through just Lowe's or Home Depot and seeing what they have in person or something rather than find the best yeah. you can online. But yeah. before doing that, yeah, right. see how or who wants to pay for that in the possession. Well, you're going to be using it for the other towns? Well, you, is it feasible to use one piece of equipment for the towns or is it easier to have one in each town? Or do you have an answer to that question? I think for the laser tape, it would be easier to have one in each town. Okay. I don't know if St. George, it doesn't seem like St. George really wants to buy one on their own because they're very, mm -hmm. they look at the numbers very closely. Yeah. Um, so I think they'd be more intrigued to buy it through the interlocal. Yeah. Um, the laptop. We could buy it yeah. and rent it. <laughs> yeah, too. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, user fee owner. Yeah, we yeah when they need it, we can yeah. charge them a small fee or something. Yeah. And the laptop, I think, would be easier to just use this one. St. George oh. only has a laptop, but Johnson doesn't. You know, neither does Berkshire. Well, it's much easier to use one laptop. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely. Yeah, right now I'm trying to balance between four different users, and I get there, but it'd be a little more smooth. Right. Um. Well, what what what's the, again? What's the cost of that? For the laptop portion, I'm not sure. Uh, we just had upgraded, so we probably want to go back through Jen at the receipts, and also how far back and how much do you want to go through for maintenance, well, or right. just to okay. upgrade in the original purpose or purchase, and just split off that. Well, and I'm thinking going forward because you're gonna, you know, laptops are what. Let's be real. Every yeah. two years, you really need an upgrade, especially with everything that you're doing and new programs and probably software you have to put on there for what you're doing, right? Or not really? A lot of it's on the cloud. Oh, is it? Okay. Oh, okay. So it may not be as bad. So maybe every three years? Yeah. Everything, not everything, but most of everything I have right now is through OneDrive cloud. Oh, yeah. So That's right. It's not, it got loaded up enough, so I needed to upgrade. Yeah. Uh, it was very small before, like four days or something oh, like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm just thinking going forward, I think it would be a good idea to have everyone chip in through the interlocal yeah. to but maybe purchase this that. We just keep it this way. Right. And the next time, let folks know the next time that when you're due for an upgrade, upgrade, either a major upgrade or just, you know, replace the whole thing. Right. But then we all do it. Okay. Sounds good. And same for the scanner. Do you want to just have a town? Yeah, I'd say just have a town. Right. Okay. Right. Sounds good. Thank you. Um, the RFP for reappraisal was sent out on yeah. um, published to the newspaper February 8th and it's posted on the website on January 29th. And it was distributed to all of the vendors. We're not vendors, contractors, late last week. Justin, I'm assuming you know this mm -hmm. because I didn't know this. But did you know that somewhere on the PDR website there's a list of approved appraisers? Mm -hmm. I just found that reading through their no, their newsletter that they send out. Oh, yeah. so I was like, I'm assuming Justin knows this. Yeah, yeah, I went down oh, through that list. And yeah, okay, awesome. Yeah. Okay.
see a newsletter. <laughs> <laughs> you were informed. <laughs> there you go. Okay. But I haven't yet. So. Uh -oh. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> I guess I would ask how long do we have Ron for? And with this until oh, March. March 1st? Yeah. And after that, it's work. It's us. Well, I'll start calling you yeah. that call. Yeah. Yes, right. <laughs> yeah. That emergency contact number. We're yes. missing. <laughs> we have faith in you. <laughs> you can yeah. do it. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Good. Anything else? Okay. Want to adjourn? Sure. Motion to adjourn. Okay. <laughs> All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, Anybody opposed? Anybody stay? Okay.